Hi, my name is Javier Albernoz. Today, we're going to be talking about working with MIDI files in Pro Tools. We'll be importing and exporting MIDI files, and we'll see the difference between Type 0 and Type 1 MIDI files. MIDI is the acronym for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It is a technical standard for communications protocol, digital interface, and connectors that was developed in 1981. A single MIDI cable is a 5-pin cable that carries 16 channels of data and it can include note on or off, pitch data, velocity, which translates to volume or loudness of an individual MIDI event, vibrato, panning, tempo, etc. This data can be assigned to any instrument so that a variety of sounds can be produced as audio. And a very useful feature, MIDI files can transfer data between DAWs or digital audio workstations. I have a blank Pro Tools session open with only a master fader in my edit and mix window as you can see here. Now what we're going to do is import a MIDI file and see what kind of options we have and you'll see how this can be a very useful tool when working with other producers or composers and trying to transfer musical data and how this generic file type can actually work between different DAWs. So the first thing we'll do is click on file in your drop down menu, go to the import tab here and you see other than audio, video and other options, we have an option for MIDI. So when we click on that, we browse, find the MIDI file that we'd like to import. You can see here that it is a .mid, or sometimes it'll be a .midi, M-I-D-I file. We'll click on that, and we get our MIDI import options window. So let's take a look at each of the options. First, we can import, just like with audio or video, we can import to a new track or simply to our clip list so it'll show up here in your edit window on the right hand side. So in this drop down tab, if we were to choose new track, we get the choice of importing as a MIDI track or an instrument track that will have the same kinds of inserts and send slots that we've seen on our audio tracks, uh, aux input tracks, and master tracks. So that's how you would load your instrument plugin right on your track that imports with MIDI data. So down here, we've got location. We've got, again, some of the same options you've seen before for other types of importing, session start, selection spot and song start which is not an option that we can select right now because we have not set a song start position in our timeline or in our session below that we have check boxes where we can choose to import a tempo map from the midi file we're going to leave that selected so our tempo data does transfer into our session as well as any key signature changes it from our MIDI file that we're importing. These other options below that are grayed out do not apply because we don't have any existing instrument MIDI tracks or MIDI clips in our session. So let's start with importing as MIDI tracks, all as new tracks. We click OK and we see our data imported into our session. Now, there's a lot here that came in and we'll take a look at each. So the first thing that we see here are the individual tracks for each instrument that made up this specific MIDI file. Now you can see that very conveniently, because they were named when they were exported as a MIDI file, the name transfers in, and that's very useful because again, 
This is just MIDI data, so there is no audio assigned to any of this unless we create instruments and assign the audio. Let me go ahead and move my master track down here to the bottom. So if I hit play right now, like I said, there will be no audio because this is just the MIDI data. So even though there are MIDI events being read, we're not going to hear audio unless we create instrument tracks and load VST instruments. So let's take a look now at our mix window. Because we chose the option for MIDI tracks, we do have all of our MIDI faders here. And again, because these are MIDI and not audio-based tracks like an instrument track would be, we don't have slots for inserts and sends. The volume that you're seeing here is actually referring to MIDI volume, which is controller number seven. So let's click on an individual track. We'll go down here to base that has some data right at the beginning. And you can see we have several things. You can see the individual note events. And below those, in this lane here, it's marked velocity. We're viewing the associated velocity with each note. And if I click and hold, you can see it's showing me what velocity number this is at. 59 for this note, 83 for this note, etc. Now, below that, we have an additional lane, and this one is set to MIDI volume. So you can see here, this corresponds to our fader here, where we are seeing MIDI volume as well. So you can see this value is set to 53, and our MIDI value volume value here is set to 53. We do have some automation happening of this MIDI controller that if we were to play back our timeline at this point, you will see it reflected in your mix window back here as you just saw this fader move. I'll play it again, keep an eye on our bass MIDI volume fader. And you can see that that data is being reflected in our mix window. So let's close that up and take a look up here at our timeline where we see that plenty of other data came in with this MIDI file. So we have here our marker lane. Now, the, if I zoom in, you can see that these are simply markers that the person that created the MIDI file entered for use while producing the music. And this uh, specific uh, piece of music was written to video. So it looks like here, these marker tracks are marking different things that happen in the video. So you can see all the way to the end, there are markers and they translate with your MIDI data from whatever DAW you are working with. Now above that, we have our meter or our key signature. And you can see here that we have our first meter entry or key signature entry, and it is 4-4 four, four time signature. And as you advance, you can see along this lane here that there are some meter changes. Here's a 3-4 change. Here's another 3-4, 2-4. So all of those are crucial to this data playing back correctly. So it is the reason we did want to uh, choose that box that allowed us to input our key signature data. Now right above that you'll see the tempo line and if we expand this there is a drop down arrow and we can choose to expand this as large as we'd like. You can see here that this along our timeline which is the x-axis on our y-axis we have tempo in beats per minute or BPM. So right here we're being shown 65 all the way up to 200. And you can see that there are a lot of tempo changes happening. If I scroll down, I can see all the way down to almost a complete standstill uh, in our tempo if we go all the way down to zero beats per minute. So this is also crucial for correct playback and these kinds of tempo changes, you're seeing a lot of them and you're seeing drastic tempo changes uh, because this was written to picture. So this is common for film score 
that uh, tempo changes happen pretty regularly throughout. So you can see how that can be pretty important when you're trying to import somebody else's composition as a MIDI file. Now let's go in the other direction and take our MIDI data that we have here in our Pro Tools session and export it as a MIDI file that we could then share with another composer or producer and they would be able to take that MIDI file and import it into either Pro Tools or any DAW or digital audio workstation that accepts MIDI files. So what I'm gonna do is first go to File, Export, and in the drop-down tab, we have MIDI. So we really don't have a lot of settings here, but the most important one is MIDI file format. So a type one MIDI file, as you can see here, is a multi-track MIDI file. So right now in our session, I see we have 11 MIDI tracks. So it's important that we choose type one so that this data would translate exactly as you see here as separate tracks and they'll be labeled just like you see here, Spanish guitar, violin, etc., etc. So I'm gonna click OK. We're gonna get our option here to name the file. So I'm gonna name it as merely type one. Click save and it very quickly saves that file. Now I'm gonna revert my Pro Tools session to a blank session just so that we can go ahead and see the results of the MIDI file that we exported. We're gonna go to file, import, and again we go to MIDI as the file type. So our original track, uh, I'm sorry, MIDI file was this one here and now we're gonna choose the one that we created, type1.mid. Now you can see here, there is no difference in the file type, whether you were to choose type one or type zero, they are both just .mid or .midi, uh, but that very crucial difference does exist within the file uh, as to whether it is multi-track or single track. We click type one, we get these options, new track, we're gonna go to MIDI tracks again, session start. Well, again, we want all of our tempo map data as well as key signature data. We click OK and there we have our MIDI file imported again with all of our uh, marker data, our key signature data, and our tempo data up here, as well as the 11 tracks that make up our MIDI file. So if you were to go and export this as a type zero, it really is just about choosing file, export, MIDI, and changing this to type zero, which you can see there, it tells you it is a single track version. Now that's definitely not as useful because essentially all of these tracks will end up on one track and you won't have this kind of separation that you need when working with a multi-track session.